morning. My name is Tara Waters and I'm with AmeriCares. Welcome to this morning's discussion, Creating Pathways to Better Mental Health. Today you will meet four people who are exploring mental health from different vantage points. You'll learn how each one is reducing stigma and establishing connections to critical resources. They will present three different approaches, a community approach, an organizational approach, and a technological approach to better mental health. We'll end with Q&A and a moment of personal reflection, so be thinking about where you fit into this important conversation. But first, when I said mental health, what picture came to mind? Mental health is an expansive topic that includes a wide range of conditions, from depression, and anxiety, to substance use disorders, to dementia, bipolar disorder, and more. Mental health affects how we think, feel, and act as we move through our lives, and yet mental health remains one of the most overlooked and underfunded health concerns of our time. As a result, poor mental health is now a global crisis, and it touches every one of us and the statistics are staggering. Over one billion people globally experience a mental health disorder. That includes about 20% of the world's children. Here in the US, half of us will develop a mental health condition in our lifetime. That means either you or the person sitting next to you could be affected. More than 350 million people suffer from depression, making depression the single leading cause of disability worldwide. And every 40 seconds, a person takes his or her own life. By the end of this session alone, 135 people will have died by suicide. By the end of today's summit, that number rises to 810. Maybe these statistics are just numbers for some of us. But for many of us, they come alive. <laughs> they have a face of a friend or a loved one. For me, it's a friend who recently wrote a letter to our group of friends revealing her own mental illness. I would like her to read her letter to you today I have her permission to share it with you. I believe it lays bare the struggle of living with a mental health condition. Dear friends, I have something very personal to share with you. I am in the middle of a deep depressive episode. Some of you may know this already and some may not, but I have been suffering with anxiety and depression for 18 years. Most of the time I do okay, which is why this may surprise you. Many people like me who suffer with mental illness are incredibly high functioning or just fall out of touch when they're in a bad episode. Trying to describe depression to someone who has never experienced it is incredibly challenging. It's like trying to describe colors to someone who is blind. Depression feels like suffocating, like my brain is on fire. It feels like a total loss of my personhood. Gratitude and good things in life don't matter because depression doesn't let you see or feel those things. There is no peace or serenity, just anguish, restlessness, and an endless stream of negative thoughts. I am taking a few days off work this week, and I am terrified I will lose my job or my standing with colleagues, but I have no other choice. I need to be honest, and stop hiding in the shadow of shame and fear and judgment. Mental illness is very real and very treacherous. Please keep me in your prayers and feel free to check in on me. It helps to feel loved and supported. When I first read this letter, I was scared. But the mental health first aid training I received through AmeriCares gave me the tools and the courage to step up and be there for her. Today, my friend is doing better, but every year, 12 billion working days are lost to mental illness. 
there are likely people in your organization or in your community experiencing these same symptoms. Standing with these individuals, we must be open to listening, willing to ask tough questions, and informed enough to build pathways to better mental health.